everyone, here we are. Uh, it's our Thantis, the Warweaver, and Secret Zancha deck. If you like what uh, you're seeing here on YouTube, hit subscribe, smash that bell, and uh, you can uh, be notified when we make new stuff right here. But let's get to the deck tech. Okay, so Andy, you took on the task to brew around one of the new Commander 18 commanders, and you chose Thantis, the Warweaver. Thantis is three black, red, green, for a legendary spider who's a 5-5, Fentus has vigilance and reach, and all creatures attack each combat if able. Interesting. Mm. Whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, put a plus one plus one counter on Fentus the Warweaver. Well, this is a spicy commander. One of my favorites from all of the new commanders we've been offered. Yeah, so this one... I, so I wasn't sure what I wanted to do this week for which one of the new... Uh, commanders I was going to pick and this came uh, from our discord this was a suggestion uh, uh, because it just looks really cool and partially because Josh Lee Kwai said he didn't like it ah. <laughs> so they were like Andy you should do Thantis and, and see if it's any good so um, so I so challenge accepted uh, but also not just <laughs> we don't do things just to spite our good friend Josh Lee Kwai on this show <laughs> Uh, in fact, quite the opposite. We do things because things are very cool. So Thantis is really, really cool. I also just think that. Uh, and it's got we got a little secret Zancha part of this, too, because I was also thinking of uh, of uh, brewing with Zancha. And it just so happens that in these colors, you can do a little bit of both. But Thantis is the commander here, and this is truly who we're building around. So we'll talk about Zancha in a sec. But right now, we're talking about Thantis the Warweaver. Um, yeah, so uh, obviously, we're talking Jund. We're talking messing with combat here, and we're talking big, big creatures. So there's a lot of different things happening in this deck, uh, but they are really a lot of them centered around the combat step. So uh, let's talk about uh, what we want to do there. So Thantis uh, is going to make everyone attack, all creatures, and that includes your own. Um, but when people attack you, you're gonna, Thantis is going to be bigger. So that's a, that's a disincentive for people to attack you. Uh, people are not going to want to make your commander massive so that when you hit them, it just kills them in one shot. Right. That's definitely not something they want. So um, this deck is a weird thing because it straddles the line of uh, sometimes we want people to attack us and sometimes we don't. Sometimes there are going to be things where you're like, ooh, if that attacks me, I'm going to die. Or I can't yep. even block that. I have, you know what I mean? So yep. so, so you get a little from column A, a little from column B. But I think it really all does come together to make uh, to make a good deck. And, and um, it actually kind of, it actually synergizes together, the not attacking and the attacking. It's really weird to say that, but it's true. So let's oh, talk about... I can't wait. Let's talk about some of the things uh, that will, um, that we'll be happy about our opponents attacking us, right? Things that are that will say, okay, great, our opponents attack us. This is going to be awesome. So first is actually a bit of a disincentive, but I think it's a pretty mild one to be honest with you. So that's why I included it, it here right off the bat. Uh, let's talk about Slumbering Dragon. Uh, Slumbering Dragon is one red. Sean, you featured this in in a couple of your decks before. Yeah, uh, I like this card a lot. Yeah, it's one red for a three three uh, dragon with flying. But it says Slumbering Dragon can't attack or block unless it has five or more plus one plus one counters on it. And then whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, you put a plus one plus one counter on Slumbering Dragon. So while the reason I don't think it's like that big of a disincentive is because it's just kind of like a vanilla, French vanilla creature, essentially. It's going to get a little bigger when things attack you. So um, I think if there's a, a, you know, something big enough, they will just attack you. They won't really worry too much about this Slumbering Dragon that can't even attack yeah. or block yet now later it's going to become a problem um but uh but i think at, at this uh, the, it still stands that you will be very happy when you're when your opponents attack you and you have a slumbering dragon out that's that's fine right it's like a and little I, fantas it's like a little fantas i also like this include you've put in trove of temptation three in a red for an enchantment it's from ixalan i love this one each opponent must attack you or a planeswalker you control with at least one creature each combat if able at the beginning of our end step, create a colorless treasure artifact token that taps and sacrifices itself for any mana of any color. So this is your ramp. Like you like this slowly ramps you up and it makes people attack you with one creature. And if if they have no good attacks, they're gonna send in their tiniest, mostly useless thing, and it will die 
at Thantis. Or they just call your bluff and like, I'm going to send my biggest, most valuable thing in and hope that you think I have a trick and you won't block it or whatever. But either way, I mean, that's where Slumbering Dragon comes in. Uh, I love this card too. And I want to point out that all three cards we've talked about so far say attack you or a planeswalker you control. There's some older cards that affect combat that don't say or a planeswalker you control. And that is an important distinction because sometimes some cards let players attack your planeswalker and not a- attack you. Fortunately... Right. We don't have Planeswalkers in this deck, so that don't matter. It doesn't but matter, if, yeah. if you do brew with a lot of Planeswalkers, just it's important to, like, note that distinction. Yeah, and Thantis doesn't care if you, even if we did a bunch of Planeswalkers, like, Thantis doesn't care. You can attack Planeswalkers. He still gets the, or she, yeah, rather, all, still gets the Everything powers. says, uh, Slumbering Dragon, Thantis, and Trove all say you are Planeswalker you control. Yes, absolutely. Okay, yeah, and, and Trove is so great because it really, truly does force at least one thing to attack. So you're Thantis... And your slumbering dragon will get a little bigger from there. Uh, what of what though is just an entire mechanic? Forget about these individual cards. There's an entire mechanic that will incentivize our opponents to attack us, and uh, that is the monarchy. Do we remember oh. the monarchy? Oh, uh, I love it, Sean. You love the monarchy. Why don't you uh, Why don't you read this this one then, just as oh. a tribute? This is Custody Lich. Three black black for a zombie cleric who's 4-2. And like all of these cards that have the monarchy on it, it says this. When Custody Lich enters the battlefield, you become the monarch. All these cards have a way for you to become the monarch. And once the monarch is in the game, it is in the game to stay forever. That's right. Whenever you become the monarch, target player sacrifices a creature. That includes when it gets invented. <clears throat> and for those of you who have not played with the monarchy before... Someone can at the at the end of your turn during your like end step, you draw a, an extra card if you're the monarch. That's huge, and people can steal the monarchy from you if they play a card like this that just outright says it. But if they don't have those cards, they have to deal combat damage to you, which means they have to attack you and hit you, or just leave you with the monarchy. Exactly, and this is one of the creatures. Uh, there's a few more, although it's they're not all in this deck, but the Custody Lich is one that actually cares about taking the monarchy back as well, not just becoming the, like, like becoming the monarchy, right? Or becoming the monarch, rather. Not just keeping it. It, it actually cares about when you become the monarch. So when you ever get it back, they got a sac- someone has a sack of creature, you know, and you, that's probably going to happen a couple times. Uh, th- we've got some other monarchy creatures in here. we got a Regal Behemoth, which I know is a big uh, one among, amongst uh, commander players. That's the uh, six mana, five, five Trample, the big green one. Uh, and it, you become the monarch when it enters. And uh, as long as you're the monarch, your lands tap for an additional mana of, any, of the color they would produce. And then you've got Skyline Despot, which is the other monarch uh, card we have in here. Actually, we have even another one, but I'll talk about it later. Uh, Skyline Despot's the seven mana five five dragon uh, that flies. Uh, same thing enters. You become the monarch, and then on your upkeep, this guy cares about keeping the monarchy. On your upkeep, if you're the monarch, you get a five five red dragon creature token, which is wow, very sweet. So this package of monarchy cards is is kind of like the almost the engine, like the, almost the heart of this deck because. It's going to incentivize your opponents to attack you, which will make your commander bigger, which is going to be one way to victory. But also, if they don't attack you, drawing extra cards is a great way to lead towards victory as well. So either way, you're going to be pretty happy with with what the monarchy brings to your game. And then, of course, you've got these additional abilities like tapping for more mana and making 5-5 dragons and stuff. You know what I predict? Uh, In a Thantis deck... Everyone's attacking all the time, so most people will have will be largely tapped down creature wise yep. during their turn or during other people's turns. Mm-hmm. So I don't think we'll keep the monarchy very long. I think people are like, well, if I have to attack you, I'm going to send in everybody what? Uh, because Thandis only has vigilance. Well, Thandis has does have vigilance, so like that's one blocker. But if I can send yeah. three little dudes at totally. you, yeah, t- yeah. two of them are probably getting in, yeah. and then that means. The person to my left has the monarchy. So that's extra incentive for the person after them to go at that person. 
Like, why exactly. should I throw away a thing at Thantis who's still untapped, right? Yeah. And then the monarchy is just going to rotate around the table, and then you'll just get it back on your turn and do and the rest. And it's, everyone's just drawing cards. It's great. And this is what I mean by um, this deck actually working, like, weirdly working with this dis... Like, it seems like it wouldn't be synergistic to have things both dissuade and also persuading people to attack you. But the monarchy on me, you attack me, great. My commander gets bigger, so my creatures get bigger. I get other benefits. Oh, now Fine. you're the monarchy and everyone wants to attack you? Great. Now you lose a bunch of life and no one's attacking me. You know what I mean? Like, it's all <laughs> yeah. good. It's, it's all good. So you're happy either way. So let's yeah. talk about some of the things that uh, will uh, either prevent or, or persuade your opponents to not attack you, right? Uh, Besides Thantis. Yeah, exactly. So why don't you start this? Why don't you say this first one here? Ooh, this is a fun one. Grenzo Havoc Razor. Red, red for a legendary goblin rogue who is 2 2. And whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, not a planeswalker, here's where it makes a mm -hmm, difference. Mm -hmm. uh, choose one goad target creature that player controls, or exile the top card of that player's library until end of turn you may cast that card and you may spend mana as though or mana of any color to cast it uh, i want to remind us of regal behemoth so if we hit a bunch of things and now we have the monarch and grenzo flips the top cards of a few levers we have double our mana accessible to cast all those cards but the first ability, goading creatures, is a way to just make sure people aren't even allowed to attack us. Yeah. This is a way to, like, select those unblockable creatures or creatures that are just so menacing mm -hmm. or just menace creatures in Yeah, in general. quite literally menacing. Yeah, yeah. So, like, creatures that you really don't want to who do have the opportunity to attack you easily this is what grenzo does is it goads them and goad makes sure that they attack anybody but you yeah exactly so yeah exactly what you just said uh occasionally there's probably going to be like maybe even like a commander like a voltron commander or something like that that you don't want attacking you so grenzo's just in there for those types of creatures and we also included a uh, disrupt decorum which uh just makes that every creature is goaded uh, and, and, and by the way, in case you're not familiar with Goad, because it was kind of a weird niche thing that happened in what, like, Conspiracy 2? Yeah. Um, Goad is, until your next turn, those creatures attack each combat of Able and attack a player other than you, if Able. So, um, it doesn't work when it's one-on-one, -on -one, uh, because it just says, if Able, right? Yeah, when it's one-on-one, -on -one, Goad they, is, ha they have yeah. to attack you. Yeah. The, the number one thing is attacking, the number two thing is any other player. Right. So 1v1, one, one one, that's not a big thing. But uh, otherwise, um, yeah, it's really great. And uh, this, is a, this is a fun deck for it. So, yeah, the, the mechanic oh, of Go man. is pretty cool. Uh, next we have, um, there's a whole other version of this deck, I will say, that is based around defenders and walls, actually. And Sean, you told me about it, and I saw it kind of popping up on the Internet a, a few times. Uh, I did not build that version of this deck, although I do think it is a very cool, very fun version. Go look it up if you, if you haven't heard of it yet. But um, but this is uh, I th I would imagine this is one that they would use in that deck. It's a hornet oh, yeah. nest, two and a green for an O2 uh, insect creature with defender, and it says whenever hornet hornet nest is dealt damage, put that many one one green insect creature tokens with flying and death touch onto the battlefield. Uh, so obviously with defender here, uh, our hornet nest is not going to attack, and it will not be forced to attack. So we actually will have this as a blocker. If they try to send in something huge, which hopefully they won't, uh, um, in in one way, because you kind of don't want your hornet nest to die, even though that's the whole point of it. Uh, right. But if it does, if they do come in with something big, guess what? You're going to get six, seven, uh, whatever, uh, one one death touchers that are then going to be forced to attack next turn. So they're not like it's they're not great defenders like in this deck. However, but they're great to make Grenzo go to a bunch of things. Exactly. So they have other uses, and there even is a way to make them blockers, as we'll see um, uh. later on in maybe uh, a neat move. Uh, but yeah, Hornet <laughs> Nest and Defenders in general are, are pretty interesting in this deck. And yeah, like I said, there's a whole other deck built around it. But, uh, but in this one, this one's a great one. Ooh, I want to talk about this card. Uh, I'm not sure if this is to persuade or to dissuade. Like, yeah. this is another one of those middle ones. Because, like, like, we love it if they choose. Anyway, it's Kazul, Tyrant of the Cliffs. Three red red for a legendary ogre warrior. Uh, that ogre is 5-4. Uh, and this says, whenever a creature an opponent controls attacks, if you're the defending player, 
create a 3-3 red ogre creature token unless that creature's controller pays three colorless or generic actually mm-hmm. so this is the thing where like it's not going to stop them from attacking outright but there's a price to be paid either to give you more creatures which lets you attack next time more or you can use those token creatures as blockers, chump blockers, mm-hmm. or they're just forced to pay a whole bunch of mana and waste most of their turn doing this. It just makes sense to go attack someone else. Yeah. Uh, and the wording on this, if you're the defending player, even if they target your planeswalkers, you are still the defending player. So this one still protects planeswalkers. Right. It's just if you are being attacked. Like if you, yeah, yeah if, if, if you have you to defend, player. if you have to defend, that's you. Uh, yeah, Kazul's weird because this is definitely like, you know, look at what you, look at all the stuff you're going to have to go through if you want to attack me. So you're probably just going to want to go attack someone else. But at the same time, we're pretty happy if people want to attack us and we have Kazul out because either, yeah, we're wasting their mana or we get a little creature chump blocker or we can just save it. Uh, like you said, uh, another one um, in the, uh, Defender Realm is Corpse Blockade and actually works quite well with Kazul, especially if uh, they choose to let us have those tokens. Uh, Corpse Blockade is two and a black for one four defender that says sacrifice another creature and Corpse Blockade gains death touch until end of turn. So we always know it's nice to have sack outlets, right? And free sack outlets are the best. Well, this is that. Um, and it's also a big, uh, it, it, it definitely repels attackers. You, you, this thing's going to get death touch. Um, we all we have to do is sack one of our tokens. Maybe we sack just a creature that isn't isn't really attacking profitably anymore, or something like that. So, uh, I this is like a card that I've had in the back of my head for a lot of decks because I'd love a free sack outlet. I love a death. I love a like a one powered death toucher. Um, I think the defender thing is the only thing that ever kept it out of my decks previously. But I love this card actually. It's a common from Gatewatch. But I think this Amazing. is like I think this does like this does a good amount of work in Commander. Yeah. Yeah. Death touch death touch and the fact that it's a defender means it's always up. Yeah, this is great. This is another great way to tell people block some attack someone else. Absolutely. Um and uh next our next thing we're gonna talk about here is like so we've got people that are not gonna attack us now. Uh we've got some things up. Uh, the reasoning for making them attack is obviously we want those other players to uh, lose life and therefore uh, us will uh, uh, we will win. Um, but uh, we can also throw down a couple of these cards and have uh, and have some big payoffs here. Sean, why do you read this one? Ooh, Curse of Opulence. One and the red next for... one too, by the way. <laughs> sure, a couple of curses. Yeah. Uh, Curse of Opulence is a single red. Uh, in both of these cases, we're going to enchant a player. Uh, and whenever anyone attacks that player... Me, the controller of the enchantment, will get one of the effects, and the person attacking them will get the effect. So, so there, there is some people who will curse yourself because it's just like, well, if you're going to attack me, because like, it, so in some cases, people are like, well, I don't want to give you that, so I just won't attack, right? Yeah. So some people will, will put it on themselves. I was like, well, I'm going to attack you anyway, so I'm going to give you the thing. Uh, but in this case, they have to attack. So if they're like, well, I'm going to get mana if I attack player B, so I guess I'm going to, and if Sean gets some extra mana, that's fine. So Curse of Opulence specifically, whenever Enchanted Player is attacked, you get a colorless artifact token named Gold that you can sack to add one mana of any color. And Curse of Disturbance is two and a black, and whenever Enchanted Player is attacked, you get to make a 2-2 black zombie, and so does the person attacking them. Yeah, these cards are weird. You know, I did. I have managed to uh, finally play with like one of these. I included a Curse of Opulence in one of my decks, and I got to be honest, I wasn't pleased. So I played Curse of Opulence pretty early. I, I I needed it for mana ramp and and fixing actually. So I was like, oh great, this is perfect. I'll ca- this counts as both of those things: temporary ramp and some fixing. So I played it on a player that was like I I knew it was like a player that was going to be a threat. So like, I knew I was like, people will definitely attack this person. Um, if not right away, they'll definitely like, I, this will at least incentivize them to attack as soon as possible. And it just had that opposite effect. People didn't care about that gold token at all. And they did yeah. not want to give me that gold token. Cause they could see I was struggling with mana. So, so I was like, Oh man, that's okay. So this is not necessarily as good as I thought it was going to be. 
In this deck, however, it is a little bit different because, first of all, you have to attack. Uh, and second of all, this can this is has like this now has two modes. You can put it on yourself, like you said, and that that will people will be like, well, you're I'm just giving him gold now. So here's here's the thing. So 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 what we want to avoid here's here's the logic that I have heard for this situation. I'm gonna put it on. Let's say I'll put it on Butler, but now people don't attack Butler because they don't want to give me mana and get themselves mana so they'll just attack me instead right so in a normal game you might put it on yourself so people are like well i mean if you attack me you give me something i know you get it too and does that incentivize you to attack me more maybe but by putting it on a third player you actually protect that third player more than you want yeah and that's what happened to me in that situation so this in this in this deck i think you're going to get away with putting on the third player a little more often and, well, of course. And but there are also lots of times where you want to put it on yourself to a get the tokens and to b get the attacks in on you. Um, but again, if they don't want to attack you because you put it on yourself, that's fine too. Yeah, like that's also pretty okay because they have to attack someone, right? If people don't want to attack, yeah. You. So like you both do and don't want them to attack you. It's 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 incredible how that somehow synergizes together two exact opposite things. Yeah. Um, Right. Okay. And yeah, Curse of Disturbance is cool because you'll get more attackers out that way. Uh, we'll get more um, uh, zombies and stuff. There's a green one that I didn't include, but um, um, it might be correct to put it in as well. Uh, What's I the just, green one? I like these ones. I lo- they let you untap all non-land permanents. Oh, you know, is, you don't want that because you I don't want them to. Yeah, I don't think you don't I want, want them it. to get vigilance. Exactly. I don't want my my opponents to get vigilance, and um, so yeah, I didn't. But like it does, it gives it to you more. You know what I mean. Anyways, uh, I I decided not to include it though. Uh, great. Okay. Well, let's. Um, so th- those are the tenets of the deck. Those those are the things we want to talk about: attacking me, not attacking me, attacking other people. Uh, but uh, included in this deck, there are a few more neat moves. Working on a neat move. So first neat move of the deck looks like this it's called might makes right uh might makes right is five and a red for an enchantment that says at the beginning of combat on your turn if you control each creature on the battlefield with the greatest power gain control of target creature and opponent controls until end of turn untap that creature it gains haste until end of turn so it's a threat and effect (sighs) that is in an enchantment form uh which is cool uh now we've got some real big creatures in this deck so i actually think it's going to be pretty easy to do this especially with thantis possibly getting very big as well right so yeah. so 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 those things are synergizing nicely might makes right is great but really the reason i and, and of course we got to take you know your opponent's best creature and we'll attack with it it'll be great but the best thing about might makes right and there's a i think there's like two other threat and effects in this deck is that we also have zancha Ooh, we have not talked about Secret Zancha yet. We have not talked about Secret Zancha, so let's uh, let's read Zancha real quick because this is important. So Zancha oh. is one black red for uh, Zancha Sleeper Agent, one black red legendary minion five five. She's from the new Commander product from this deck too as well, the Jun deck. As Zancha Sleeper Agent enters the battlefield, an opponent of your choice gains control of it. Zancha attacks each combat if able and can't attack its owner or Planeswalkers its owner controls. And then there's the ability of three generic. Xantra's controller loses two life, and you draw a card, and any player can activate that ability. So in our Ooh. set review, we talked about Xantra, and we talked about Assault Suit. And then someone very correctly pointed out in our Discord, or maybe it was in a comment, I think, on YouTube, that you can't, you won't get any chance to put Assault Suit on Xantra. Because the second she, she doesn't even enter, like... As she enters the battlefield, an opponent of your choice gains control of it. So, like, you don't, you, there's no point where you have her on your side of the battlefield. Um, yeah. So, uh, putting a solitude on Xantia is very good, though. Uh, so, because th- we don't want, you don't it, want her we don't to, want Xantia to be sacrificed. Exactly. Now, you're just going to not choose someone who has sack outlets. I mean, that's a possibility. But there's also a possibility that they'll just run a random sack outlet. Either way, Assault Suit, which is the four mana equipment um, that gives a creature plus two, plus two, haste, can't attack you or a Planeswalker, and can't be sacrificed. And then at the beginning of an opponent's upkeep, you may have that th- that player gain control of equipped creature until another turn if you do untap it. Equips for three. Anyways. 
Uh, that's this is what's happening. Might makes right grabs the Zancha that you cast on and, and gave it to someone else so that you can not only attack with it, but put an assault suit on it and then pass it off for the rest of the game. So yeah. so not only is Might makes right just good in the deck because we'll be we'll grab some big creatures and we'll attack with them and everything, but when when we get Zancha out, which we have a couple of cards that are going to find Zancha, going to tutor her up. Um, we'll be able to actually maybe throw an equipment on her or something like that that belongs to us, which Ooh. is sneaky. Now, you got to make sure that your opponents can't just three mana, lose two life, and gain, you know what I mean, activate Zancha's ability to death. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, like while you're, while, while you I, grab while her? While I briefly have control of her? Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. But I'm sure you can time that out so that, yeah, that's not going to be a big deal. I have a feeling your life total will on average be higher than everyone else's with what we're doing in combat here. I certainly hope so. So yeah, so that's that's Zancha's in the deck because I think she's just so cool. And because of this like everyone attack everyone thing that's happening here, I think Zancha's really, really strong. And I love this. I love her ability of just like everyone gets to draw cards and kill this poor sap who has to have her on on her on their side. It's the best. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, uh, so you got another package yeah. of neat moves here. Uh, yes, this which one's, is this is all about giving other opponents extra creatures to attack with, and we're counting on them to attack other people with them. Yeah, or I mean, again, maybe it's us. Who cares? Uh, uh, these are the hunted creatures, and these are uh, uh, I, I think I've been kind of uh, not really paying too much attention to these creatures, but they're really they're really solid. Uh, in certain situations and in certain decks. Uh, so we have Hunted Dragon, we have Hunted Horror, and we have Hunted Trolls. So we have the Jun, all the Jun colors here. Uh, basically what they all do is they're they're like overstatted creatures for their cost, but they'll give a target opponent like some way of blocking them really effectively. So for example, Hunted Dragon has is a 5-mana 6-6 six, six dragon with flying in haste, which is like, that's a crazy rate for that. However, you also have to give, uh, when Hunted Dragon enters the battlefield, Target opponent creates three 2-2 two, two white knight creature tokens with first strike. And actually, you know what? Hunted Dragon's kind of the ba a bad example because those knights can't block this dragon because they right. don't have flying. But, like, the one that, like, Hunted Horror is, like, a 7-7 seven, seven with trample, and it makes, it gives someone two 3-3 three, three green centaurs. So they can sort of block. That and have they, protection from black. Oh, yeah, they do. Absolutely. And yes. uh, Hunted Troll, for example, gives, which is an 8-4, and it gives an opponent four 1-1 one, one blue fairy creature tokens. So, like, it gives them blockers, but, like, they're not the best blockers. You know what I mean? Like, they're not great. So, but we're just happy to, we're happy to give our opponents creatures. Hunted Troll also regenerates just for a green. That's true. That is very true. And like I said, Hunted Horror is a 7-7 seven, seven with Trample. So, these are, like, overstatted huge creatures. Um that we're going to be casting here and we're going to, we're happy to give our opponents creatures in this deck. And I think the underrated thing about, at least in our meta uh, for, uh, for the hunted uh, cycle is that in a one V one game, it sucks to give your opponent creatures, but in a multiplayer game, those creatures could very well attack a mutual opponent of them. So absolutely. Like, if you're behind these, these hunted creatures are actually really good because you can yeah. give it to another player. Who's not the player in the lead, obviously. And then now you both have more of a presence to to come back in the game. Yeah, I I, I really do think they're they're um, they're a bit situational, uh, but I think they're pretty solid. Uh, okay, and so this, in this next deck they're great. this next neat move you're gonna have to explain to me. Okay. Okay. So this neat move is Hunted Wumpus, three and a green for a six six beast. That's okay, but it says whenever hunted when Hunted Wumpus enters the battlefield. Each other player may put a creature card from their hand onto the battlefield. Andy, there's very big creatures in people's <laughs> hands in this game. Yes, there are. And I honestly, I've seen this card before, and I'm always like, oof, that's not worth it. That sucks. And I remember that's seeing it I'm in Battle thinking. Bond. Like, <laughs> this, this guy sucks. Um, and I only did find it because I was looking for the hunted creatures, right? So I'm looking for a hunted dragon, hunted horror. And I find hunted wumpus. Uh, as well and i'm like you know what i actually think this works in this deck because i think i want my opponents to have like big things out that they feel comfortable and like happy attacking with because this is uh, this is kind of like a fast game deck too i think right i think people's life totals are going to go down pretty quickly with this especially if we can keep thantis out there 
Um, and we do have some, uh, we also, I shouldn't mention, we have some recurring ways, or, or sorry, redundant ways to like make everyone attack all the time. There's a couple other cards in the deck that do that as well. Yeah. It's not just our commander. Uh, so there's going to be a ton of attacking in this, in, in any game featuring this deck. So if we have some stuff out that's deterring attacking, like this is definitely, pro well, not definitely, but this is probably going to be one of the things where you want to have your, um, your Kazool going before you do this maybe even or maybe like a, a corpse blockade or something uh because yeah like you said someone might drop uh, you know an ember cool off of this or someone might drop something Ooh. really crazy off of this like the commander legal ember cool for sure but but yeah but i think this is kind of worth it I'm, i'd be excited to see what people just throw into the battlefield after i play my you know what Olympus. not every deck runs on gigantic gigantic creatures Exactly. You know what? Some decks might just throw down, like, you know, for every Avenger of Zendikar that pops up, maybe someone else is just like, uh, okay, I guess I'll put Arcanus out. <laughs> this is also, like, an interesting way to, like, I was thinking about this just in general, this card. Uh, this card should probably go in the Surprises Discoveries because it is a surprise that I would yeah. even include it in this deck. But I was thinking about this in, like, a green white deck, and it's like, you play this. Everyone's like, yeah, free creature, wicked. And then you, like, board wipe. <laughs> and you're oh, like, you know what I mean? that's so mean. It's like, oh, yeah, you're so excited to put your wicked creature out. And then I just, I lost my hunted <laughs> Wumpus, but you lost, like, some eight mana creature, or, you know, something, something really oh, big. Oh, that's mean. That's, like, an interesting little move, I think. That might be a bit of a neat that move. That is on its a own. neat move. So, yeah, that's a possibility even in this deck. We got some board wipes here. So, yeah, I think Hunted Wumpus is something that works. Now, this is something I'd be definitely. Uh, yeah, you got to know how, what, when to drop this. Like I said, you probably want some stuff that, that stops attacks or, or like maybe uh, having Grenzo out would be really good for this guy. Um, but, yeah, Hunted Wumpus. I think there's a, a place for it. And then you have to attack the player that didn't drop their monster because they're all going to be untapped, right? Right. Um,. Cool. Uh, well, there you go. Uh, and, oh, yeah, there's also the little neat move that sort of goes in the Hunted category, too, which is a land, actually. It's Forbidden Orchard. So it taps for uh, a man of any color and then gives a, 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 it gives a opponent a 1-1 one, one colorless spirit creature token that does not have flying. It does not have flying. Um, yeah, th yeah. This is obviously good in the deck, right? Yep. Like, we don't care if our opponents get little 1-1s one here or there. Not at all. But please, attack away with those 1-1s. One um, yeah. Yeah. Cool. This is a super neat move that you told me about before we started recording. This is Zathrid Gorgon, five and a black. Uh, it's three six. It has Death Touch and two and a black. Tap Zathrid Gorgon. Put a petrification counter on target creature. It gains Defender and becomes a colorless artifact in addition to its other types. Its activated abilities can't be activated. So. This is a genius way of, like, if there's a creature, like, I can't afford to attack with this, I need to leave this back, or I don't want to just attack nothing. This is an emergency way to just save one of your creatures. Save one of your creatures. Also, create a good blocker that doesn't have to tap, right? Like, not even just save it. Like, make Thorn of the Black Rose a, a, a petrified wall that can only block... Uh, because Thorn of the Black Rose is three and a black for a one three with death touch. And it says whenever it comes into play, you become the monarch. So now not only because otherwise, like this card is not great because it has to attack all the time. So it's not a, it's not a good defender, obviously. But now it is. Same thing goes for Acidic Slime. The, the three and two green two two with death touch that when it enters the battlefield, you destroy an artifact enchantment or land like you play this card. Well, you'll happily turn this guy into a defender so that this two two with death touch isn't attacking anymore. Now it's just deterring attacks for you. Not to mention that you can even put the petrification counter on Zathrid Gorgon herself. <coughs> now you Excuse me. don't want to do that right away. You probably want to wait and see what's going on with the board a little bit because uh, there's also the um, ability that uh, when you petrify the creature, when you put the counter on it, it stops activated ability. So you won't be able to do her thing anymore. But it's not necessarily an incorrect move to keep a 3-6 Death Toucher on the board that now is, is a wall so that it can't it, it doesn't have to attack because of, of of Thantis's ability. So, I think this is like an amazing card in this deck. It's really cool. Yeah, cool. And and not to so mention too. you can you can like again if like some crazy creature that your opponents have is is going to kill you, guess what? Now it's a defender. So at least you can turn off that it's killing you. 
if you if if need be. Uh, one more card I want to bring up is in the neat move category is this is one of the original the new commander cards that came with the deck and although it has landfall I don't think it's meant for the land based version of this deck it is meant for this version of the deck it's nesting dragon three red red for a dragon with five four and flying but it's got landfall whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control you create a dragon egg which is a zero two with defender that's the perfect kind of chump blocks, right? If people decide to come in. But then when that creature dies, you get a 2-2 two, two red dragon creature with flying and red, it gets plus one plus zero till end of turn. Fire breathing. So not only do you have free chump blockers by playing lands, but that turns them into threats that you will then turn on your opponents again. So it's, it's even better incentive that just keeps piling up to not attack you. And... It's wrath protection. If they do wrath the board, all those eggs become dragons. Yep, I love I love nesting dragons. One, I, it's one of the more fun cards from the from the new uh, commander set for sure. Yeah. Um. Okay, we are now into the surprise and discovery section, and while a couple of these have been surprises and or discoveries. Uh, this is the discovery that I went specifically looking for. Uh, one great thing about uh, this deck would be if they, if all of our creatures could have Vigilance. Well, there's not that many ways in these colors to just give all your creatures Vigilance, sadly. Uh, but uh, Sight of the Scale Lords is one sort of way to do it. So Sight of the Scale Lords is four and a green for an enchantment that says, At the beginning of combat on your turn, creatures you control with toughness four or greater, which is the majority of the creatures in this deck. Not all of them, but it's it's definitely the, the vast majority. They get plus two, plus two, and gain Vigilance until end of turn. So your creatures actually even get bigger for the combat. They get Vigilance, which is key, and then, yeah, you can attack where you want, but now you've also got blockers, which is unique to you, ideally, because your other creatures, or sorry, your other players, uh, your opponents, they won't, they won't have that. Um, a Chroma's Memorial gives everything Vigilance as well, but that card's 20 bucks. Uh, and then there's like another uh, artifact that does it. Uh, tr trumpet? Something? Trumpet? trumpet? Oh, Angel's, Angel's, Angel's trumpet? trumpet? Something like that. We're, but, but that's like, that makes everything have vi everything have Vigilance. We don't want our opponents to have Vigilance. So that was that was out um, right away as well. So well, Side I mean, of the Scale Lords is actually a really good card in this deck, I think. Wait, can I make a case for Angel's Trumpet for a sec? Sure. Because, so. But Angel's Trumpet is something that like is 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 incentivizing people to attack, and then but we already have forced them to attack all the time. I see. So but like if not... but but if we're in a position where, yeah, I guess we don't want to give our opponents the choice. So what Angel's Trumpet says is they uh, it gives everyone vigilance across the board, but at the beginning of each player's end step, you tap all untapped creatures that player creatures that did not attack this turn. And Angel's Trumpet deals a damage to them for each creature that way. So, but like, yeah, everything I guess has to attack though. So everything will get vigilance, essentially. Yeah, and then and then they'll be up, and, and then, then they, they won't do anything. Yep, you know what? My yeah. bad, my bad. I thought it worked, but it didn't. No, yeah, yeah. No, you got it. Yep, no worries. Uh, this is a good card though. It belongs in a lot of other decks. Uh, take take put that one in uh, your uh, Darian King of Keldor decks. It's great. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, it is time for the three stars of the deck. Take Ooh, a look. top performers. Yep. Here we go. Uh, number three is uh, this one is one Sean suggested, and it is very solid in the deck. It's archetype of aggression. One red red for the three two enchantment creature. Creatures you control have trample, and creatures your opponent controls lose trample and can't have or gain trample. Uh, giving the big uh, hunted monsters and your your Thantis, uh trample is amazing. And cutting off your opponent's tramplers so that you now have, so that if, if you do end up blocking, uh, chumping is a really easy thing to do, is just fantastic. This card's amazing. Does a ton of work in this deck. Star number two, Loxodon Warhammer. Three generic for an piece of equipment. It also gives its equipped creature lifelink and trample. And plus three plus oh, not to mention that. It equips for three. This is almost a commander staple if you're like a big attacky deck because that life swing put this on Thantis. Mm. Now now it's got Vigilance, Reach, Trample, and Lifelink. Yeah. we got, like, keyword soup going on over here. It's yeah. great. Absolutely. And this, you know what? This also, uh, another thing is, like, you're, if you've taken a bunch of damage because people attacked you and you weren't able to block or you weren't able to get any of your, uh, your, your, you know, your stuff out there, uh, Warhammer is just going to gain you a bunch of life, get you right back in it. 
Um, and the number one star of the deck. I, it's arguable whether or not this is the number one star of the deck, but I just wanted somewhere to feature her to let her to let you guys know that like there is a bit of this deck that is dedicated to her. Is Zancha, uh, sleeper agent. It's just she's just um, a, a, it's like a there's like a little sub theme that's that's dedicated to her in this deck, uh, and she is lots of fun to play with. And even if she's not your commander, I think she's really solid. So um, yeah, Zancha, sleeper agent, De Ooh, definitely deserves sleep. her. Definitely deserves her own deck as well, but it's also really fun to uh, to have her uh, be featured in this deck. It's great. Amazing. Not only is she a sleeper agent, she is a sleeper commander. <laughs> she is a sleeper commander. That's absolutely true. Yeah. Uh, shall we do a budget report? Yes, let's please do it. Beep, 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 beep. It's back. Beep, 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 it's back. Beep, 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 beep. This is where we take all the cards and tell you what it's worth and tell you the most expensive cards. Uh... We're not doing a strict $50 budget anymore. We're allowing ourselves to put cards in that are more than $5 if we need to. But we're going to tell you how much the deck costs. It's still going to be pretty budget. Uh, this one comes in at $96.24. And we're going to offer you a statistic now. How many of the cards make half the value of the deck? In this case, it's about $45 bucks ish something like that. $48. Bucks. Uh, so in this case, 12 cards make up half the value of the deck. The top three most expensive are Forbidden Orchard, that land that gives your opponent spirits. That's a $7 card. Uh, Disrupt Decorum, the sorcery that gives all creatures you don't control gold. That's a $6.5 card. It's crazy. Those commander exclusives, like if people like them, they shoot up in value because you cannot get them anywhere else. It's the only reason I bought any commander decks this year. I bought two, and that's why. Anyways. Uh, and then the third most expensive card is Cryptolith, right? We haven't talked about this yet. This is a one and a green for an enchantment. And it says creatures you control have tap, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. This is in here to protect creatures who you really don't want to attack. You can tap them for mana before your combat phase, use that mana, and then not attack with them because they're already tapped. This one is almost five bucks. It's like just over four, four and a half. So I think you could cut forbidden orchard as a land very easily absolutely easy good yep yeah. no question about it i think disrupt a disrupt decorum although very powerful i think you know we've got a little bit of redundancy we've got enough things to pr t protect from attacks i think that's cuttable yeah as well, and, if and you like wanted. all creatures are attacking anyways and if you have any of the other ways to like stop like not make people not want to attack you it's kind of redundant anyways kind so, of so i mean i think it's a really fun card obviously and i do think it is quite good even in this deck still but I agree with you totally. You could easily cut this and, and you wouldn't miss it really. Yeah, and then Cryptolith, right? Although that ability is hard to reproduce anywhere, Song of Frailies is a not bad budget pseudo one. Mm -hmm. It only works for two turns, but hopefully after those two turns, the threat that's around that's preventing you from attacking that you're so desperate to do, you can get around. And let's not forget, on the third saga act of Song of Frailies, all your stuff gets vigilance anyway, so and, and indestructible. So you're probably good. Yeah, it's true. It actually would be a nice replacement for this card. Uh, also, and like that any you, like, vehicle. Vehicles do basically the same thing. Ideally, you probably want one that has like flying, so that you so that because if, if you go to crew before your attack phase to save whatever creatures you don't want attacking, uh, that they will crew the vehicle and the vehicle will have to attack because it is now a creature, yeah. right? So yeah. yeah, ideally you'd get something that's like evasive in some way yeah cool cool very cool yeah man I, I i gotta say i wasn't sure what this deck was going to turn out like but now i think i want it like i was looking at the one the, you know one of these jund commanders uh i don't have a jund deck yet so i'm i'm possibly looking at one of these guys and thantis is looking like it's Neat. a lot of fun i don't have a deck that incentivizes a lot of attacks right now and i, th I think it's something that i'm i'd like to get so well, I have an Okagachi five color deck that does a similar thing. I right. featured it on this podcast a number of episodes ago. Yeah. Uh, and it will be benefiting from a few cards from this set. Yeah. And this this episode has enlightened me. I'm going to tune it up because of this episode. Do you think you might throw a hunted wampus in there? I think I might. No, are you serious? <laughs> That's Maybe, nuts. Hunted, hunted wampus is a tr <laughs> because like I run big things too. Hunted wampus might be outside of the realm of it, but man, like. Nesting Dragon, faux show. Thantis yeah. herself, for sure. Thantis, so strong. Uh, lots of fun. Uh, but yeah, there it is. Uh, that's the deck. Um, uh, Thantis the Warweaver. Uh, 
I gotta say, uh, quickly before we log off here, that like I know I like I, I give this Jun deck a hard time because it's supposed to be about lands, and then I didn't wasn't so happy with a lot most of the reprints. Uh, but like the original commander cards that are in this set are like so many of them are really cool. So you know, Thantis falls in that in that realm for sure, and I do love the commanders they've come up with. So yeah, I will say Thanks, great Wizards. job on that, definitely. Uh, okay. Well, yeah, that's the, that's the show this week. That, nothing? <laughs> uh, yeah. I, <laughs> Good, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. Thanks everyone for watching. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Go check out Bruce News. Bye. Big thanks to all our patrons who make these episodes possible. Yeah, and if you want to check out more comedy videos, check out our Bruce News playlist. Make sure you follow us on Twitch TV to see when we play live. If you want to chat with us, head over to Twitter. We're at Commander's Brew. And please hit subscribe to Ding the Bell and find out when we got new stuff coming out. See you next time. Bye.